What's up, everybody? Welcome to the first ever episode of What the Bible Really Say, though. Hand expressions included with the whole the whole nine doing all of that. Uh, welcome to the first ever episode of What the Bible Really Say, though. I wanted to kind of do uh, an introductory episode uh, just talking about the origin of the show, what you can expect from the show, and then just kind of update the new viewers and new people who are here with my testimony um, of how I got to, to where I'm at and what, what the Bible really said though was all about. So let's talk about the origin story of what the Bible really said though. How did what the Bible really said though begin? Where did it come from? So I like to say this, I was driving around in the university area, driving around somewhere and the Holy Spirit put in my heart that I should make a video explaining the real meaning behind John 10, 10. Yo, welcome to the first episode of What the Bible Really Say Though, where I talk about tricky passages in scripture. The first scripture we're gonna touch on is John 10, 10, where it says, the thief does not come but to steal, kill, and destroy, but I have come that you may have abundant life. Now, growing up, we all heard this scripture, and growing up, we all thought this was the devil. But what if I told you that this scripture, Jesus is not talking about the devil, he's talking about somebody else. In the beginning of this passage, Jesus starts off in John 10:1 and says, Most assuredly I say to you, he who does not enter the sheepfold by the door, but climbs up some other way, the same is a thief and a robber. In this scripture, Jesus characterizes the thief and the robber as the person who tries to enter into the sheepfold some other way. The sheepfold is where the believers are, right? So it's talking about that the thief and the robber is somebody who tries to become a believer by not believing on Jesus. Um, as you can see, I put the video up on the screen, um, the real meaning behind John 10, 10, and I should call it what the Bible really say though, call it what the Bible really say though, and talk about the real meaning behind John 10, 10. So I was working from home permanently at the time I got up, got dressed, got ready, was about to start working and it dawned on me again. I was like, okay, you know what? Let me go ahead and make that video. So I made the video and um yeah so I, I i put prop my phone up and i made the video and it got a lot of engagement you know unlike i get engagement from my different type of posts but this one was like really like i got a lot of engagement from it and it's like okay i got a lot of good feedback from it and um i switched the format from doing it on the phone to doing it on the computer the next time around and, you know, I got good feedback from him again, and I just kept going and going and going and going. And that was about a little over a year ago. And now we're in 2023, and I'm still doing it. I'm still dropping videos. But um, I wanted to kind of just explain, like, the heart behind it. The heart behind it uh, about doing what the Bible will say, though, isn't to, to put boast and say, oh, I'm some guy who knows all about the Bible. Um, or I'm some guy who can talk about the Bible, look at me, I'm the authority when it comes to what the Bible really says. That's not the whole point of it. The whole point of it, it comes, what the Bible really says, though, comes from a passion of wanting to know what the truth is, right? There was a point in my life when I was letting preachers and preaching dictate what the Bible said, right? I was, um, and kind of kind of get into my, my testimony, but I was under a church that I was under my whole entire life that was a sort of a mixture church where, you know, we saw signs, miracles, wonders and everything. But we also got put under a lot of legalism. We saw, you know, the facts of prosperity and abundance and righteousness and things of that nature. But we got heaped with, with, with legalism. And as an adult, when I started to go back there, I started to. Get, carry on some more of those traits. I saw the signs, the miracles, the wonders, the healings, but then I also became victim to the legalism and the works mentality and the everything, right? And then one day, I in 2018, God started to really deal with me in that year about identity, righteousness, finding out what those things are, because I didn't really listen. At that point in time, I hadn't really listened to a whole lot of sermons that talked about grace, identity, and righteousness. And I remember typing Awake to Righteousness on YouTube because our, my church at the time had one sermon on the YouTube channel 
that talked about Awakening to Righteousness. And I watched that sermon maybe 10, 20 times because it was New Covenant. And it was all I knew because I didn't know any other New new Covenant things from what I was seeing in my Bible to what's on YouTube. And I typed it in and I found a man named Paul White. Um, and his ministry changed my life. And I told him that when I met him uh, a couple years back, the ministry changed my life. And I watched the sermon. It's called Awake to Righteousness. It was this 53-minute, 54-minute sermon with no, like, the, the video barely had any saturation. It was in, like, some looking storefront church. It was a white man preaching. And I was like, what is it? what am I watching? But I just sat and watched it. And it was just going, going, going. And it was talking about everything, dealing with the finished works and dealing with righteousness and dealing with all those different things. And it confirmed so many things, and it made me angry. Like, it made me angry because you mean to tell me I've been in church my whole life and I didn't hear these types of things? I wasn't hearing these types of messages? It made me angry. And it sent me off on a course to find out what the Bible really says about a lot of things. And I used to watch those sermons six and seven hours a day. At that time, same time frame, Creflo Dollar started teaching a lot about the New Covenant. I heard about a man by the name of Joseph Prince started teaching a lot about New Covenant. My pastor, he started, uh, he started, he wasn't my pastor at the time, but he started talking about certain things relative to the New Covenant and started confirming what I was reading in the Word. And it just set me off on a course. And I just wanted to find out what the Bible really had to really say about things. And I ended up leaving the church that I was at my whole entire life up until like 2018 and went to my, my pastor who was preaching those same messages. And he started a new covenant church. And I've been there ever since. And I've just been on this course to find out what the Bible really says, though, because at that moment, watching that first initial sermon, looking at that message and having realized like, yo, like this, the Bible says this and I didn't know it, but the whole time I thought it meant this. When it came to subjects about righteousness, when it came to subjects about communion, when it came to subjects about tithing, when it came to subjects about everything, I I looked at it, I'm like, that's all I heard was this, but you mean to tell me this is the truth? And that's the whole um, like the whole idea behind the ministry, the whole idea about behind the show is that I want to awake people to the reality of their righteousness. I want to awake people of the reality of rejecting religion and remembering their righteousness, gaining their righteousness, realizing their righteousness, right? I want to, I want people to get in, get into that, right? And that's the whole mode of, mode of operation, the whole mission behind rejecting religion, the whole operation behind what the Bible says, though, is I want people to read the word for themselves. One of the scriptures that's a mandate um, in the this ministry and in, with this show is Mark 7, 13. I believe it's Mark 7, 13, where it talks about in the New King James Version, you've made the word of God of none, none effect through your tradition, right? It, the, Jesus is talking to the Pharisees there and he's saying, hey, you guys, you have made the, the, the word of God of none effect through your tradition, through stuff that you've handed down, through stuff that's not even in the word. The word can't even go to work because of your religion, because of your tradition. Right. And so many people today are heaped down with condemnation, heaped down with um, just religion, legalism, they're heaped down with it. And the word of God can't even begin to go to work in some people's households and some people's ministries in some people's lives because they're heaping the word of God onto to re- religion and legalism. And it's like water and oil it can't mix, right? You can't put old wine and new wine skins, the wine skins will burst, right? That's what you see a lot going on. So the motiva- motivation behind creating rejecting religion and what the Bible will say, though, is to motivate people, individuals to open up their Bibles and to see what it really says for yourself. Right. I want you to read your Bible. I don't want you to. T- I don't want to just tell you what the Bible says. I want you to hear what I'm saying and then go check it in the word for yourself and be like, oh, the Bible really does say that. Oh, it really does say that. Wow. That's what that really meant. Oh, wow. And un- open your eyes to it. Right. The Bible talks about in Acts 26 is like one of the foundational scriptures with this ministry where Paul is giving his account to uh, King Agrippa 
about what Jesus is telling them. And Jesus is telling them, I'm sending you to the Gentiles to turn your, to turn them away from the power of darkness to the power of light, to the from the power of Satan to the power of God. Right. To open up their eyes. Right. That's what this ministry's purpose is. I want to open up people's eyes to the real gospel, to the true gospel, the gospel of grace. So you can expect um, from this show, I'm going to try to get these out as often as I can. I don't want to say, oh, I'm going to get them out every week because one week might be different from the other, but I'm going to endeavor to to do that. But, you know, uh, you can expect these as often as I can. Um, you can expect, if you fo- go, please follow um, Rejecting Religion on Instagram. That's the ministries page, Rejecting Religion. Follow me on Instagram, at Drew Muzon, and there'll be teaching updates. There'll be how-to videos, how to study your Bible, There'll be a question and answer, things of that nature. But let me know what content you guys want to see from me. That's just a little bit about what you'll see. You'll see graphics, you'll see you'll see videos, you'll see reels, shorts for YouTube purposes, things of that nature. And you'll you'll begin to see these videos. I'm 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 gonna get these these um, episodes on podcasting platforms so that people can maybe able maybe able to listen to them too and not just watch them. Um, and yeah, that's the goal, but, um, I just wanted to come on really quickly and just share a little bit about what the, about what, what the show's meaning is and what to expect and just my heart for teaching and my heart for the people to know what God's word really says. So, um, I pray you, you stick with me, you join me, hit the subscribe button, hit that like button and stay tuned for more content. Peace.